Today we're going to be playing an Azorius control deck and this deck was inspired by one of our Discord community members, Punch Fist. Now, today's deck is going to be called Locked Out and the reason we're calling this one Locked Out is because it's going to shut down our opponent's ability to play Magic all together. How do we do that? Well, with a two card combo between the Archon of Amiria and the Jin Gataxius. If you guys don't know, the Archon is going to make it to where both players are only allowed to cast one spell per turn. Jin Gataxius is going to counter our opponent's first spell every single turn based on the type of spell uh there's some wiggle room there but basically if uh our opponent's playing certain types of decks they might not be able to play magic at all which is really great for us not so great for them <laughs> the rest of the deck is compiled of some really great instant sorcery speed cards that we can copy with jen Cataxius, as well as some fun artifacts we can copy as well like treasure chest for a uh, really big mana explosion as well as some card draw and card advantage uh, the deck's a lot of fun. There's going to be a full deck breakdown at the end of today's video, so stick around for that. And in the meantime, there's a link in the description below for the full deck list. And if you guys like content just like this, don't forget to give the video a big like as well as a subscribe. Both are free ways to help support and grow the channel, and I'd greatly appreciate that. With that being said, enjoy today's games, guys. We'll see you at the end. Peace! What's going on everybody welcome back to another video today we're going to be playing an azorius control deck uh surrounded by uh the, the build around today was jenga taxius and the archon of amiria both of these cards work really well together and punch fist from discord actually mentioned to us that we should try to give this uh deck a run because uh you want to see if i could uh, put something together but I think it was a fantastic idea and I had to give it a shot because the, the idea of Jenga Taxi is being able to counter everyone's first spell pretty much, you know, instant sorcery artifacts. I, I know it's pretty narrow, but the fact that it can counter their first spell and then the Archon only allows your opponent to play one spell per turn really can lock an opponent completely out of the game, depending on the matchup. And uh, that's why we're calling today's deck, you know, locked out. It's uh, it's it's very interesting. We'll see how we can... Uh, get it going today i tried doing this in an uh invoke justice kind of a build and i don't think it was working out for us um there were just too many too many types of uh things we were trying to do in one in one sitting uh we were trying to you know get jenga taxes to the graveyard bring it back we, there was just too much going on so um, i'm electing to just change it up now and go straight for pure control and see how we can do um, it's been a while since i played a control deck uh so it should be pretty interesting um, but we do have Jawari Disruption. Opponent might, you know, hit a Memory Deluge here. So Jawari seems like a pretty good idea. And then we'll flash in the Wandering Emperor if it turns out to be something different. But I've got to imagine it's... Oh, it's not. Okay. I don't know what our opponent's doing then. All right, Soul Tie. That makes things a little bit interesting. No plays have been made up till turn five. I have no clue what in the world our opponent's trying to do. Uh, we're going to flash in the Emperor though and see if we can get away with... Uh, with it resolving it does resolve wow okay i yeah not a single clue comes to mind at what our opponent's up to i'm gonna go ahead and just hang on to jawari i guess even though they have so much mana to work with i gotta imagine it's not going to do much fading hope okay i want to hang on to the treasure chest here so the Jin can copy it. Two, three, four, five, five. Yeah, we're gonna hold on to the treasure chest because we don't exactly need it right this second. And if we can get a double from the the Jin, then I'll be pretty happy. Be a happy camper. Just trying to figure out what in the world is going on on the other end here. Uh, the opponent can activate the hive though. Yeah, they can activate the hive. They don't. They leave my wandering emperor alive. What in the world is happening here? The element of surprise is definitely a, a foot here. <laughs> All right, that's fine. We're still sitting on Jawari, I guess. There's not much more we want to be doing. Uh, Jenga Taxius could easily get countered though, um, but I haven't seen a single counter come from our opponent yet. And I would imagine that they, they would have tried to counter the Wandering Emperor if they had any. That was a couple turns ago, obviously, but... Uh, I think we're gonna be okay. Yeah, they're they're tapping all their blue sources here to kill the Wandering Emperor. I feel really happy now. The the Jin is definitely gonna make a a play, and we've got backup Jins just in case they you know they do go double removal spell here. We got backups because they will need to run two 
they they need to run two spells because Jin is going to counter the first one so that was a very heavy spell to, to run out see now that was a huge mistake they should have gone infernal grasp get that countered and then hit us with invoke justice but instead they went the other route it looks like Jenga taxis is going to be the perfect answer for our opponent here they're not going to have much to do uh when their deck is consistent of mostly instant and sorcery speed spells so it's all good they're going to try to go for the beatdown play now which is totally fine um ooh, what an answer what an answer for uh the opponent here yeah i can only play one of these i'm gonna go with the the treasure chest we're gonna copy the treasure chest and then we'll flash in the wandering emperor to kill out their uh oh well we actually can't kill that can because it's ward ability it's what three yeah that was actually a mistake on my part that's fine though we'll do it the following turn all right we will do it the following turn a little bit of a mistake on my part totally forgot about um the opponent there being able to have that ward mechanic tied to their um but the jawari no longer needed here um again we got the complete game plan online the engine is full they only get one play per turn and that play gets countered almost guaranteed based on the matchup that we're in here so totally fine uh don't like that that's hitting us for seven to pop though this is actually really nice so wandering emperor comes in we have three additional lands here to work with uh four additional lands to work with to then deal with that so that's going to be the move that is going to be the move and uh let's say pass the turn here also revitalize just gains a six life which is another way we could just do this it's totally you no know, totally up to us on how we want to go about this but Yeah, because they do have two they do have two of these hall halls here so maybe it is just to revitalize maybe we should have gone revitalize there it doesn't really matter we could go revitalize and then go treasure chest there's there's so many options for us here but um wandering emperor is fine too i mean we just give we get the wandering emperor down we get the you know the uh one one counter the following turn we close the game out with the uh, lethal so i guess that's the fastest route to victory Opponent has two mana to work with and one spell that's going to get countered by the Jenga Taxius and the turn is going to be over. So that is going to be the game. And we're going to go ahead and reset the game for the audio issues. Absolutely driving me nuts. But what a fantastic first game we just had there uh, against the control deck, which is not not the type of deck you want to be against us uh, running out, you know, <laughs> Jenga Taxius and Amiria. But uh, GG. All right, we reset the game. Hopefully no more audio issues. This bug is, this bug drives me crazy. This audio bug drives me absolutely crazy. Uh, I think after this game, I'm going to go eat some uh, cold pizza out of the fridge. I'm starving. Uh, let's see what we got. We get to go first. Doom Scar Treasure. You know, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to keep this. It could be problematic because of the two lay in hand, but we have revitalized. We have treasure chests. Hopefully we get there with the mana, but... uh. We need we need revitalize to kind of carry a lot of the weight here as far as finding us uh, lands. Nice, we get one off the top. You'd love to see that. You'd love to see it. Selesnia, that's probably a good sign that this is gonna be good. Yeah, more than likely it is. All right, we'll hold the multiverse. Not bad, not bad. Uh, I need to go double white. I think priority over anything else. I'm gonna go treasure chest. Get that ready to go if we can find some treasures off the treasure chest as opposed to a uh, card draw i actually wouldn't be too upset about that uh being able to get gin down early would be a a good a good thing but uh against an aggro deck though we might not exactly have the best matchup here doomscar obviously super helpful but shoot well didn't hit a land not good not good i guess we get the behold the multiverse ready just in case that happens again we can't really afford not to get another land drop off the top so that's what we'll do gonna take quite a bit of a, a damage here though eating you know three per shot you know four now with the another one with counter and then depending on what they play out but uh doomscar does clean up the board so 
Hopefully they uh, invest a little bit more into the board so we get a bigger doom scar. We have a full hand here. Oh no, I did not expect that though. I thought for sure we were not a rune deck. I should have assumed we were, but not a lot of people run ranger class in a rune deck. That's not good because once that's on the board, we have a really hard time removing it. We do have one devastating mastery. Maybe that's the move here. Maybe we just go for a... Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. So... Yeah, I don't know, man. I think we pass the turn here and just behold the multiverse. Maybe just pop the treasure chest. I don't know. Let's see how many times I can say I don't know. Yikes. Yikes. I don't have two blue sources. Otherwise, I would definitely counter that. Well, I mean, if we get three treasures, it might be worth hitting a sock coming on that. We do get three treasure tokens. We get five. I'm sorry. Five. All right. That worked out okay. Now, do we use these treasures again to behold the multiverse? Oh, we don't actually get the option. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. As good as Doomscar seems right now, Jin Gataxius also seems very good because if we can double with the multiverse. Yeah, we have a good blocker against the 1-1. We're going to take five, six potential damage on this next turn with the Ranger class pumping up the wolf, uh, which is fine. We keep the 1-1 one, one back for a turn. We look to uh, double down on the Behold the Multiverse. Hopefully hitting, you know, double downs on, like, Revitalize. There's a lot of things we can double up on, which is going to be great. But good, the bad news is we're... Oh, wow. Okay. Well, that's also bad news. Yeah, this is just not a good matchup for us because we don't counter enchantments or creatures, and that's all they have. So we just lose this game, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Simple Doom Scar, though. It's got to be the play. Simple Doom. I mean, if we gain a lot of life, though, with the. Again, if we can copy like a Revitalize off the Djinn, I mean, that's pretty darn solid. Um, a Devastating Mastery, too, opens the door for a lot of things. We'll see, man. We'll see. Okay, looks like they're going to blow up my land here. But we got to grab a blue source, right? I mean, we got to be able to cast uh, the gin if we get the mana and stuff. So we got to go for a blue source, but that does slow us down a little bit. I, I did need that dual land because you never know. Devastating mastery might come off the top. All right, we go here. We potentially need this land for the Jinn to come down later. So, I mean, no, nah, we'll find another land. We'll find another one. That's pretty good, actually. That's pretty good. Slows them down significantly. So they can't just, I mean, they could actually just spam off the top of their deck if it's creatures. Or no, they can't. I'm sorry. They can't. I'm thinking Jinn. I'm thinking Jinn. I don't know why. Archon is perfect here. It's perfect because they can't spam the top of their deck. That's good. Uh, but confinement comes down. Takes care of that, no problem. Um, it's basically going to be devastating mastery or bust here. Um, that's why it's in the deck, is for matchups like this. That's nice. And then we'll still have four to cast this. All right, cool. All right, I mean, we're hanging on by a thread. Hanging on by an absolute thread at the moment. Uh... Man. Do we counter that? I mean, we we have to play this on this, right? Yeah, we have to. All right, so yeah, we don't counter it. We just go here. There it is. And two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Land, bang, bang. Oh my God, perfect. Perfect. All right, sorry, I'm excited. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. All right. We're chilling. 
We're chilling. We get back the Emiria and we get back the Jenga Taxis. Oh, this is going to be great. Here comes the spamming off the top of their deck, but it's fine. The more the merrier is all good. As long as they don't have haste, which I haven't seen any red mana from them, which means they're probably not playing runes. And if they are playing runes, they, uh, they, they're not playing red. So there's no haste here. So, uh, we're fine. We're fine, man. Oh my God. We're so fine. This is why this card is in the deck for moments like this. Whew. Heart's pumping, man. Do I still lose this game somehow? Probably. I'm probably missing something here. Alright, they go with the clue. And they play the wedding announcement? Ah, oh, come on. You know you want to. You know you want to. See ya. Freaking see ya. Alright. Good luck. Good luck. All right, that's your one play for the turn. Hope you enjoyed it. My turn. My turn. If you don't mind, we're going to go ahead and double down on this real quick. And then the following turn, on your turn, I'm going to double down on the Revitalize. I'm going to just pass the turn here, play safe just for this one turn uh, until we gain the life. I could have attacked there pretty comfortably. Um, yikes. Okay, let's double down on this and then counter this seems like a plan all right double down on revitalize another gin sure uh oh i i'm an idiot i just uh i just got screwed by my own game plan there i got screwed by my own game plan there which was to uh they take the emiria though which is good because the confinement circle can't take the gin that was my own fault there i actually have uh never been in a position there to uh play two spells on a single turn after we've gotten the combo off so that was my own fault i walked right into it because i was trying what i was trying to do there guys is i was trying to gain the double up on the jenga taxius uh, and then counter the confinement circle but i only got to play one of those turns uh one of those things per turn so maybe i should have countered that uh instead but uh yeah that was that was a silly misplay on my part silly misplay on my part all right i got I got got by my own strategy. All right, let's go ahead and draw some cards and gain some life, hopefully. Come on, dice. Treasures. Come on, cards. Yes. Give me some cards. Give me some cards. Uh, we already played a land this turn. Did we? We must have played a land this turn, yes? We did, okay. All right, so we could play Revitalize probably. Or we could Faithful Absence, Thermoside. I don't know. I'm going to attack. We have plenty of life now. We have plenty of life. We got plenty of Jenga Taxis is going on here. So let's just attack their face. Uh, and hold. let's just hold our counter magic. Let's just... I know we could double up on, uh, you know, like a Revitalize this turn and hold a counter spell. But if we draw two cards here, we're gonna have to discard the hand size. So yeah, let's just let's just pass the turn here. Let's just pass the turn. <sighs> kind of psyching my own self out right now, man. I'm screwing myself up here. All right, Machiko, is that worth countering? Probably not. Yeah, probably not. We want to probably save this for the the hollowed haunting. Getting aggressive, are we? Fine. That's a okay. They draw a card. I'm gonna revitalize. Behold the multiverse. A little double up on that seems fun, but uh, I think I'm just gonna end my turn here. All right, and then we'll see to the Empire this time around on the uh, whatever gets the, the pump here. Uh, let's go ahead and just foretell this. I'm just kind of holding off on the Faithful Absence play here because I don't really want to give him two clue tokens. Doesn't seem like a fun plan for me. Um, yeah, I just think I'm going to see to the Empire on this next play. All the counter spells. 
We got so much mana to work with thanks to the treasure chest. Things are going to get a little weird now for me. I'm not going to lie. This is where most of my misplays are going to happen when I have... When the window of options becomes much more vast is when I'm going to start making a little bit more mistakes. So bear with me on that. All right, and then we're going to... Ooh, it's another Machiko. Well, we can't see the Empire this one anyways either because it got a... Got an additional counter. So let him... Ah, shoot. Okay, well... This is annoying. This is not going to get copied, by the way. Unfortunately. Uh, and we're going to do it now so they don't get to draw a card. Because if they attack with both creatures, they obviously kill us and then they also get to draw a card. Uh, they've seen enough though. They don't want to do any any more magic, which is fair enough I mean, I was gonna have a pretty big play next turn I was gonna be able to multiverse copy on my upkeep if I needed to and uh, there were plenty of things I could have found here to really make their days worse like another devastating mastery would have even been pretty cool um, Even though it kills our Jenga Taxius, it would have been nice because we get another one off on you know from our hand we, had, we were basically completely ahead in that game once we hit the Devastating Mastery. And there was really almost no way I could navigate us into the ground. But I I mean, I didn't play super well after that point of the game. But um, I'm okay. I'm learning. We're growing. We're, we're doing okay. On to the next one. Oh, that was a good game. It's a really good game. Uh, devastating Mastery came in so clutch, man. That, that card was put into the deck very, very late. We didn't have it in there. And we actually ran into a very similar situation where we were up against you know another like full enchantment and you know bounce their types of, of creatures back and forth with things like uh you know the uh the, the circle so i went ahead and added that in late and uh, it came through clutch in that game that's for sure came through very very clutch uh this was probably not the most ideal keep here but i'm going to keep it anyways just because uh, you know, the treasure chest can hopefully get us to where we need to go as far as maybe mana for the invoke the winds. And then we find a gin off the top, so even better. Demir, Doomscar not looking so hot. Uh, I am going to go with the treasure chest though right now. Hopefully we find a land off the top. Otherwise we don't even get to crack it. There was no counter spell there, by the way, which is great news. We, we know they don't have Jawari Disruption now. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, I guess we go with the Emiria. Go with the Emiria. They only get one play per turn. It's probably going to be a removal spell, though. Yep, there it is. Why do we not get our fourth land drop when we need it, man? I don't get it. All right, there we go. There we go. There we go. Now we're playing. Now we're playing... Solid hand we got here. Um, Jenga Taxius obviously coming in early off the, tre the treasure chest would be fantastic. And then we get to then copy things like treasure chest as well as invoke despair. I'm not invoke despair, invoke the winds. Uh, which doesn't seem like it's going to be a very good card in this matchup, if I'm being honest, just because uh, the opponent's not exactly running a, a creature build here. I'm surprised they don't crack the bank buster now so they don't miss their land drop. 16 all right not exactly the treasures to ramp but at least we get the card draw here so that can hopefully get us get us going closer hmm is there a point in foretelling anything here do we want to hold our counter magic the, the, the big question is do we want to hold the counter magic is it going to be relevant for turn four they will potentially have five mana which is planeswalker territory so i do believe we want to make sure we hold our counter spell so we'll just foretell the multiverse here we'll drop the doom scar because it's completely irrelevant in this matchup i'm almost positive of that it's fine oh we actually are, we we're back down to seven. Oh. I was saying that I need to discard a card there. I thought we were at eight. All right, it's fine. Even better. No plays. Nothing from the opponent here, huh? Okay, we'll go with the Behold the Multiverse. We'll see if it sticks or if it gets countered. It does stick. Um, I don't think that's relevant. Uh, another land is relevant. But a Jawari. Three, four, five. We can't play... 
We can't play Jin this turn anyways. Okay, we'll take it. We'll take it. And we'll play out the treasure chest. And we'll also hold the counter magic again. And say go. Um, Jawari could be important. I mean, it could it could come down as its own counter spell here, which is great because they're only on four mana right now, which is why I didn't play it. Obviously, I know that slows down the curve here of the Jenga Taxius potentially coming out next turn, but um, I'm afraid of counter magic myself, so I would like to maybe hold Jenga Taxius a little bit longer so I don't get hit by my own, you know, my opponent's Jawari Disruption. So I think holding the Jawari Disruption out as our own counter is the play here. That's why I made that that decision. Um, some of you guys might be like, dude, if you would have played the Juari, you get the Jin out next turn. But good chance Jin gets countered itself. So let's just hold on to it. Let's just hold it for another turn here. They had to discard a lot there. They are getting really screwed on lands here. Maybe, uh, obviously in hindsight now, it's like, man, I should have played the Juari because I could have got Jin down and I would have been comfortable because they have, uh, well, they have two blue sources. Maybe not. Alright, I think that's the move and then just say go. We probably won't play the Behold the Multiverse even if we have a chance here because I don't think we really need it. We'll probably just crack the treasure chest of all things. Uh, we're going to start taking four damage though from the Bank Buster, which is annoying. <sighs> control decks are... It's been a while since I've actually played full-on control. It's, it's actually not my alley anymore as much as it used to be. So it's like... Feels a little strange, especially in a mirror control matchup. A uh, lot of removal from our opponent's side. So having both the Amiria and the Jin down is going to be so helpful. All right, we need to get... I, I honestly want the five treasures more than I want the uh, card draw, which is super rare. But let's see if we get it. Let's see if we get it. Nice, we get the treasures, nice. So now we're, we're sitting really nice because now we have plenty of counter magic uh, to go with the Jin. Love it. Absolutely love it. Nice, it resolves. We didn't even need to use our counter spell. Love that. Five, six mana left open. Uh, yeah, just going to pass the turn now. Pass the turn and hopefully we just outvalue our opponent to the end of the game here. They were just off to such a slow start, though, too. I do feel a little bit bad for them in that sense. Um, we're going to let Jin counter the first removal spell, which I'm sure they're going to play some sort of removal spell for, like, two, like an uh, Infernal Grasp or something. And then they'll probably try to follow it up with, like, an Invoke Despair. March is actually a really good card for them to have because they play it for one, so they don't actually end up using a lot of their mana to uh, get rid of it. Smart play. And there's the Invoke Despair. We knew the Invoke Despair was probably going to be the second card. That's how that deck really wants to operate. But um, obviously, Jin being able to copy my counter spell that I'm playing here makes it pretty impossible for them to uh, answer. See, they shouldn't have done that. Because I got the copy off. But, I mean, I guess it does get rid of it for the rest of the game. But Invoke Despair is still getting hit here because of the, the stacks already triggered for the copy of the Saw coming, right? I would hope so. Yeah, it does. Okay, I was going to say... It, I was going to say it should work, but... All right. But I guess that, again, that makes sense, though. The Test of Talents did hit, technically, the Saw coming, and now they're all gone uh, for future plays. But um, it's not ideal for them when Jin is copying stuff like that. I never thought I'd see the day where it actually makes... Uh, uh, you know, the copy of the counter spell is relevant, but it was definitely relevant there. All right, I'm gonna go here just so I can copy it. There's nothing good worth stealing here, so. I'll hold the multiverse. Uh, I will take the land because it's a, it's a win con, essentially. I uh, don't need a second wandering emperor, I don't believe. Uh, revitalize is nice. Um, I think I'm just going to play this now. Just so, I mean, I'm going to have to discard the hand size anyways. I have eight cards in hand. So yeah, let's just drop this now. I don't know. Maybe not. Is there an argument to be said to play it late so we can instant speed minus two potentially? 
yeah, I'm gonna hold on to it and then just uh, flash it in because there's a chance that you know they activate this return attack or even activate their hive, and I may want a minus two on this. And I don't think the doom scar is relevant, so I'll just discard the doom scar out of my hand. Um, doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. All right, that's gone, and we passed the turn. Ooh. Just another game where I feel pretty in charge at the moment about what's happening. Uh, that's annoying. It definitely is going to get through and we, uh, get the... Uh, well, actually, never mind. Not good enough, my friend. Not good enough. I could plus that, giving it plus one, one. Jingataxia survives, and then uh, now the lane is just opened up and clear for another attack for seven. And, uh, yeah, they didn't want to see any more, which I don't blame them. When you're a control deck, the last thing you want to see is a Jenga Taxis on the field. Uh, so I don't, I don't blame them. That's kind of our, our bread and butter matchup. So GG. Man, this deck is cruising along, playing so well right now. I'm not playing super well. Um, I, I think I'm playing a little bit better. That last game was definitely a little bit better. Uh, the, just, the problem is, is there's just so many options, right? When you're playing a control deck like this, the options and opportunities are absolutely endless um so it makes the play lines a little bit trickier to navigate and make the most optimum play lines uh, i'm trying to get better though as a player guys i hope you guys understand i am trying my best to uh, get better as an uh, a player of magic uh the deck building obviously is my strong suit i love i love building decks the creativity part of magic has always been my favorite uh navigating those decks kind of been always my uh my weakness <laughs> um all right so we're gonna go here treasure chest and then we'll probably follow it with the wandering emperor to minus on the kami uh the kami has to go through exiling process because uh it'll keep returning uh finding a dead uh, devastating mastery in this matchup again is going to be pretty key um but yeah i think we're going to maximize the mana here play out the treasure chest and then say go obviously and then minus on that that's that's going to be the move let's see what they have for this next turn uh doom scar would be pretty helpful here in this particular matchup because they got two visitors already on the field. Uh, by the way, though, uh, we might have to play this out on our turn now, main phase, because of the fact that the Paladin class now taxes the board, uh, which is really annoying because it is going to die now uh, on the... Shoot. Didn't really have a great target, though, to put a 1-1 counter on anyways. Oh, this is actually brutal. They had a pretty fast start here. Pretty brutal. I still think it's the move though. We gotta get rid of that Kami and it has trample. I mean, we have to try, right? Or do we just sit on it for a turn and look to activate the treasure chest? I don't know. I don't know. See, this is one of those situations where we have a lot of different play lines in front of us that we can take. We can take six, seven damage potentially, even more obviously because they can pump this up and then also drop more enchantments. Um, or we could take care of this problem now and then have them, you know, just attack the wandering emperor for one damage <sighs> jesus i don't know i'm gonna pass the turn i'm this is a much greedier play this is a much greedier play but i'm going to go for the uh i'm gonna go for the tre uh, treasure chest play all right they're investing more into kami which is good i mean the more lifelink and one one counters they invest into kami the better so by all means that's something we did want to see but uh we might just die here <laughs> We might just die here five nine ten i mean no we're, we're gonna survive they didn't hit a land drop so we're looking good all right now we need to hope and pray that we get a uh, doom scar as well off the top of the deck treasures that's not bad we do need treasures um save the mana for now Can we afford to do something with that mana though right this moment? I mean, technically we could go for like a Doom Scar potentially. Ah, I'm going for it. Ah, that's such a waste of treasures, I feel like. But you know what? I feel like we do need to find that Doom Scar like ASAP. Um, Amiria also not bad. Do we keep that on top? I mean, it is a body to block with potentially. And yeah, I think we can do that. <sighs> we can do that now if we play out of myria that's going to leave us with one two three four mana left over right now that i can uh, 
you know, play this into. And yeah, I think that's fine. All right, here we go. None of this feels super great, but you know what? It slows them down. It gains me a little bit of life here. It it, it makes it to where they, they're they going to be forced to play one spell a turn. I make a decent block here with the Emiria on, you know, the, the generous visitor. Um, okay, or not, and we just lose. Yeah, that was tough, man. It was tough. We, uh, we ran into a very, very aggressive build here. Um, and, I mean, they just... Three mana, they just got all this power through. Crazy. It's crazy, but you know what? It's fine. We, uh... We probably could have navigated differently there, I think. I don't know. I don't know. It was a it was a tough matchup, man. The Paladin class really screwed us over there. This card right here definitely got him the win for sure, though, because not being able to play this out on curve on four and just, you know, exiling out that Kami right away and forcing us to have to use the treasure chest was not exactly ideal. Revitalize on turn two, had I known that this was going to come at us this hard, would have been a pretty good idea as well. Uh, but again... You know, we learn, we grow. It is what it is. We had a really good, you know, couple of games with this deck. So uh, I had some fun. Let's go ahead and break it down. That will conclude today's gameplay portion of the video. We are going to break the deck down now in full. But before I do so, I just want to give a huge shout out to every single person who's made it this far into the video. It means the world to me and I do appreciate it so very much. And uh, with that being said, let's take a look at today's deck. Uh, like I said in the beginning, this deck was inspired by, uh, you know, Punch Fist in a Discord, uh, you know, who suggested that we try the Jenga Taxius with the Archon of Amiria. We've kind of got the gist of that now and how that works. Basically, we're trying to shut down our opponent from playing all together, if possible. And uh, what's nice, too, is the Jin allows us to copy our own spells. So we can essentially still be running, you know, out two spells per turn. Uh, which doesn't really matter even if we can just run one I mean that's still good enough because our opponent's not running any uh, and the rest of the deck from there was pretty easy for me to kind of put together and conceive I tried to actually run this in a an evoke justice type of deck and get Jin Kataxis back early uh, that was a little greedy it didn't work out so well so we switched it over to a full control deck just make it a very good solid uh, you know structured control deck all around Jin Kataxis which is kind of tough because you do need to make sure you're running instant sorcery and artifacts Pretty much you need the trifecta here to get full value out of the copying uh, spell side of things and i thought invoke the winds is a great top end to try to win the game with because azorius control is cool but you know if you're you're getting Jin and archon out what is your actual oops what is your actual win con here um beating them down with jenga taxis might be tough to do if they've gone wide so we do need uh ways to kind of win the game around that so i chose invoke the winds it's uh, a really great choice and the hall of the storm giants is obviously another great choice and then from there the rest of the deck like i said pretty controlly we've got you know a lot of sweepers doom scar and we added devastating mastery later into the game because we kept running into runes and uh people who are playing a lot of uh, enchantments and uh you know artifacts so we wanted to make sure we could blow everything up and then uh, I chose for Behold the Multiverse as our draw spell because if you copy a memory deluge, you're not going to be able to get value out of the second copy. Uh, the treasure chest, obviously, we got to see this in action. Beautiful card to copy with the Jenkins Axius. Saw it coming turned out to be a really good card to copy as well. Uh, being able to copy a spell twice has been really nice. And uh, Fateful Absence is a great removal tool for anything. Uh, White Blue doesn't have a ton in removal department. Fateful Absence does a really good job. Um, giving them a clue token never feels super great, but um, it is what it is. And then Revitalize was nice because uh, the life gain. There was a lot of games where we were getting really close to pulling off the combo because it is a seven drop creature we're talking about here. So Revitalize was a great way to kind of get us there with the life gain. And then we splashed in two Jawari Disruptions to hopefully get some more extra uh, tempo, you know, <clears throat> counters out there uh but yeah that's the deck in a nutshell guys you can try to run this in that invoke justice shell that i was talking about earlier um it, it's worth a shot I, I was almost there i've almost got it dialed in but i just wasn't quite getting it uh all the way there and uh we were definitely losing more than we were winning so i had to scrap that idea but i'd love to hear your thoughts on how to make the deck better or if you guys found a way to run it in that version but uh let me know guys i would love to hear your thoughts i'm sure this isn't the first time someone's tried this so definitely let me know if you guys have any ideas and uh comments below and uh lastly before i hop out of here huge shout out goes to the marty mob as always if you guys don't know the marty mob is the membership program here on the channel so i got to give them a huge shout out and thank you at the end of every single video to let them know how much i truly appreciate their support it goes so uh far and uh you know it, it really means the world to me so thank you so much for everything you do and uh that will conclude today's video guys today's wednesday power went out yesterday sorry for no video but um 
we will be streaming live tonight so be sure to hop in there and say what's up uh turn on the notification bell if you want the notif uh, notification when we go live or join the discord but uh yeah we'll see you guys there hopefully if not we'll see you guys tomorrow for the next video until then peace Hit him three times like a hat trick. Yeah. The name is says you know Patrick. Yeah, yeah. If you play him, then it's tragic. Hit him with the mythic, yeah, that's magic. Yeah. Ooh. FTG, that's what you'll see if you like and subscribe. Where's the upload, man? Uh. Man, all of the time. Coming with the best expert to the meta. This ain't